Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing personalized fantasy romance and romance book recommendations. All right guys, so I asked over on my Instagram for people to leave me super specific book preferences, like what they're looking for in a book, whether it be tropes or certain types of characters, and I got so many responses, so thank you guys so much. And this was actually a bit of a challenge. Some of you guys went so specific with what you were looking for, and it was really fun. So I'm so excited to talk about these books with you guys. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's talk about these books. All right, guys, so I have my Instagram open on my computer and I'm just gonna pick prompts at random. But I did get a lot of people that asked for a reverse age gap or older woman, younger guy. So that's not really one of my favorite tropes. I have heard that The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan is really good and features that trope, but I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet. So the only book I could think of was Lessons in Corruption by Jan Darling. This is the first book in the Fallen Men series, which is a motorcycle club series that I love. I have a full spoiler-free series review. I will leave linked in the cards and the description. But honestly, I always forget that this is reverse age gap. And I think it's because it's student teacher. So this teacher starts out at a new school and she ends up having a relationship with her 18 year old student. But the 18 year old student is so confident. He is the son of the head of the motorcycle club. So he's kind of like the rising star of this motorcycle club. He's eventually going to be the head. And he is just in control of this relationship from the very beginning. The teacher honestly seems like the more naive one, even though she's older. So I really enjoyed this book. The series as a whole is just amazing. So highly recommend if you're looking for a reverse age gap, check out Lessons in Corruption. All right, so next up was One Bed Trope. And this was really hard because I have so many. I'm gonna do a separate rec video of just One Bed Trope books. But A Court of Mist and Fury is always gonna have my absolute favorite One Bed Trope. It's two characters that have just kind of been pining after each other alone in a cabin and they're sharing a bed and it's just, it's glorious. It has the perfect amount of angst and you just, you want them to kiss already. So that's my favorite. And then From Blood and Ash is also a really close second. And I feel like those are really popular. So I tried to find some ones that weren't as known. So we have The Confidence of Wildflowers by Michaela Smelter. So this is an age gap romance. We are following Salem and she is about to graduate high school. She's been dating the same guy for a really long time and she doesn't really know what she's gonna do with her life when she graduates. And then in moves there and he is this single dad architect, super nice and just, I love him so much. So anyway, they end up pursuing a relationship and at one point they go to this concert together where they have to share a hotel room and they end up sleeping in the same bed and it's so good. So that is one of my favorites. And another one that I randomly thought of is Meg Nolia Parks. So I just realized I grabbed the third book, not the first book, but you guys know what I'm talking about. So a lot of people already know what this book is about. We are following these two London socialites who are very rich and they have broken up with each other and they just can't stop hurting each other. And it's so frustrating, but they have these very cute moments where they share a bed together and not much happens besides them like talking and pining after each other. And it just helps build the angst. So this is another book that features a lot of the one bed trope. Okay, so this next one was one where I really had to like stare at my bookshelves to figure out a book that fit this. So it's a book where the female main character runs from the male main character as he hunts her down, but not stalking. Because originally I was like, oh, that's haunting Adeline, but not stalking, that was a little difficult. So I came up with Fourth Leaf or The Fourth Leaf, which is a novella. And it's about these childhood best friends where the girl has always had a crush on her guy best friend, but then she ends up being friend zoned and now they're adults, they still stayed friends. Um, and he's fixing her sink and she realizes that he might have like a primal kink. So she ends up asking him to play hide and seek and he has to hunt her down and that's pretty much the entire book. And I really enjoyed it. So that definitely fits that trope. And then another one was Desperate Measures by Katie Roberts. So this is actually a Jasmine and Jafar romance and very, very spicy. It is part of her like Disney villainous, is that what it's called? Wicked Villain series. So I've only read the first three. This is probably my favorite, but Jafar really enjoys chasing Jasmine and Jasmine enjoys running. 
So I think it happens like one of those scenes within the first chapter of this book. So if that is what you're looking for, look no further. This has it in spades. All right, this next one is unique plot, something that shocks you. And they mention like Inception. So I'm actually gonna talk about a book that I hate. <laughs> So Perfect Strangers by J.T. Geisinger. I can't even really get into the plot besides saying it's about this woman who is struggling to finish. I believe it's a book. So she goes to Paris um, and is staying at her friend's apartment where she meets this stranger and they decide to have this brief affair and not tell each other anything besides their names. But uh, it definitely has a shocking ending and I was not a fan. But if you want a book that you're definitely not gonna guess the twist, I would check out Perfect Strangers. All right, this next one, I actually love a reluctant hero that doesn't want to like the female main character, but he can't not like her. So I didn't even realize that's a trope that I like gravitate to, but when I thought about it, I was like 90% of the age gap romances that I read deal with this. So immediately I thought of Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas, and this is Pike and Jordan's relationship where Jordan is in a relationship with this guy. He doesn't treat her very well, and on her birthday, he forgets to pick her up from work. So she walks to the movies and when she gets there, she meets this very attractive guy named Pike. They strike up a conversation only for Jordan to find out it's actually her boyfriend's dad. So Pike tries his best to not like Jordan just because he's trying to rebuild his relationship with his son and he doesn't want to ruin it. And it's just so fun and kind of intense watching Pike eventually be like, I love this girl. So this is a really good uh, representation of that trope. But then also All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zabata, where we're following this woman who has just divorced her husband and she decides to stay at an Airbnb where she originally grew up and doesn't realize that the Airbnb was listed by the son of the guy that actually owns the property. So when she gets there, the guy that owns the property is really grumpy about it. And he's like, you can't stay here. And he does his best not to like the main character, but it doesn't end up working out and he falls in love with her. And I just, I love this. This is definitely my favorite Mariana Zabata book. So highly, highly recommend. Next up was Fantasy Romance with a Love Triangle that is not in all caps YA. And I totally get you there. I feel like a lot of YA romance features love triangles. So the best love triangle in adult fantasy that I've seen is in A King So Cold. I love this love triangle. It is so good. So if you don't know what A King So Cold is about, we are following Audra. And the beginning of the story, she is just this very merciless evil queen. There is an army that is about to invade her castle. And we find out that her husband is being kept prisoner in the dungeons and has absolutely no memory of Audra or how he got there. So it's that story and then it's just, it's so good. It really shows how this, you can see a person as a villain and a monster, but there are so many steps that brought them to that place. So she has really good motivations for being considered evil. And I just, I absolutely loved it. And like I said, the love triangle is so good. Um, and there's also a second book, The Stray Prince, which is a little bit darker in tone, but just as good as the first. One of my favorite fantasy romance duologies. And next is Romantic Suspense. So my absolute favorite Romantic Suspense is Where the Blame Lies by Mia Sheridan. It still blows my mind that this is the same author that wrote Archer's Voice. This book is dark, so definitely check trigger warnings for following this girl who ends up being kidnapped and essayed by a stranger who she believes is gonna kill her. However, she is able to escape and then eight years later, it seems like the killer has returned. And I, I loved this so much. I read this in one sitting. I flew through this book. It was just so dark. I'm also a huge fan of like true crime. So like it scratched that itch for me, but definitely highly recommend if you like romantic suspense, this is perfect. All right, so this next one I struggled with because they asked for a band of misfits trying to get to a common goal. And right away, I was like six of gross. It's perfect. It's Heist, Band of Misfits, one of my favorites. But then they said plus spice. And from what I remember, the Six of Crows duology did not have a lot of spice in it. It is YA. So then I was kind of stuck. The best I could come up with was the Bonds That Tie series by Jay Bree. And I know it is a stretch, but we're following this group of people that are societal outcasts because they all have these very strong powers that everyone else is fearful of. So they are all working together to try to complete this one goal, which is to kill the resistance and these gods. So it kind of fits, kind of doesn't. Like I said, it's a stretch. Uh, this is a wide choose paranormal fantasy romance. 
I'm in the middle of the last book. It is one of my favorite series. So good. If you are a fan of like Zodiac Academy, um, I think you will definitely enjoy this book. So check it out. I will be doing a full spoiler free series review of this series as soon as I finish the last book. So that should be coming out in February. But yeah, this is the best I could come up with. So sorry. And next up is another one of my absolute favorite tropes and it's touch her and die vibes. So first up we have a dead man walking and this is by Gianna Darling. So this is following Bea and Priest and everyone sees Bea as being very sweet, very innocent, but she does have a darker side. She is really into true crime podcasts and she's also really into Priest and Priest is the hitman for, or hitman for the fallen MC. And he's a little bit of a sociopath. He really kills mercilessly. He's considered like death personified. And Bia and him end up having a relationship where Bia is being hunted by a serial killer and Priest makes it known he is just gonna kill anyone who stands in the way of their relationship. And it's so good. So that definitely has the touch and die vibes. And also, There Are No Saints, and this is by Sophie Lark. So this is a serial killer romance where this girl ends up being abducted by a serial killer and left for dead for another serial killer to find her. And when that other serial killer finds her, he's very intrigued and they end up having a relationship and she's pretty much dating a serial killer and she knows it and he is very much touch her and die. And I loved it. This is one of my favorite duologies by Sophie Lark. So highly, highly recommend. And next up was a retelling, but it couldn't be Beauty and the Beast or Cinderella, which was kind of difficult. I came up with House of Salt and Sorrow and this is a 12 dancing princesses retelling. And it's kind of like a gothic, paranormal mystery. We're following this girl and her sisters keep dying in these accidental deaths. So she's trying to solve the mystery. Um, I really love the setting of this book. We are in this like isolated island and the, just the descriptions of like being alone and all you hear is the ocean. And it's just, it was very unsettling. And on top of all of this, her and her sisters are sneaking out every night and going to this magical ball. So I really enjoyed that. That was one of my favorites. And then another one I recently read, not one of my favorites, was Once Upon a Dream by Sarah Simone. So this is a book that features three different stories and there are three different retellings. So we have the 12 Dancing Princesses, but then also a Princess and the Pea and a Snow White and Red Rose story. So this is super spicy um, and they're all retellings. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Sierra Simone's writing, which is why I didn't love this. But if you're looking for spicy retellings, this is definitely a good choice. All right, and these next two I'm actually gonna combine. So someone requested a mafia romance with both characters being over 25. And then someone else requested a dark romance with older characters. So for this, I have When Villains Rise by Gianna Darling. So this is a mafia romance duology that is so good. So we're following Elena and I'm pretty sure she's like 26, 27. And she is an attorney and she ends up becoming the attorney for Dante, who I'm pretty sure is in his 30s. Um, And he is the head of the mafia in the area that they live. I totally forget what city it is. But it's so good just because Dante, who is like this crime boss, is so happy-go-lucky and he's like the sweet one. And then you have Elena, who is the grump in the relationship. And I just loved that dynamic. And this is such a fun mafia duology. I think this is actually one of the first mafia duologies I ever read and I really enjoy it. I've actually gone on to read pretty much every book by Gianna Darling. She's one of my favorite authors. So definitely, if you're looking for a dark mafia romance with older characters, check out When Villains Rise. So this person asked for a police or cop romance and I only have ever read one. And that is Good Gone Bad by Gianna Darling. So yes, this is slowly turning into a Fallen Men video. Uh, It really has a trope for everyone. So definitely, if you have not read the series yet, it's amazing. But this book in particular, I'm pretty sure is book three. And we're following the daughter of the head of the motorcycle club and she ends up murdering someone. And then the cop that arrives at the scene is a family friend, it's Lionel Danner, and he kind of helps cover it up. And it's their relationship. It has a little bit of BDSM. And Lionel Danner is one of my favorite uh, male characters. He's just, he's so good. So definitely check this out. This is more, one of the more underrated Fallen Men books, but I absolutely loved it. This next one is so good. So main character has to take care of a child that's unexpectedly now theirs. So I have two for this. First up, we have Juniper Hill by Debney Perry. This is the second book in the Eden series. And by far my favorite because of Knox Eden. So Knox Eden is the chef. He's very close to his family. Um, and he's recently gotten out of a relationship. Well, because of his sister, he ends up having to live with this stranger and her child. And it's so sweet to see Knox 
take care of this baby. It was just, it was so good. So this is a really popular one, but one I hear, or I don't hear a lot of people talking about is Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. So this is a mafia romance where this young girl, I'm pretty sure she's only 18, ends up having to marry a mafia boss and becomes a mother to his two kids, despite never having interacted with children before. So I love this just because it was so nice to see the romance between the two main characters, but also see this girl take care of these children as if they were her own. And it was just a really good story. I always say if you're new to Mafia Romance, try out this one first, just because I feel like it is on the sweeter side. Um, but yeah, definitely enjoyed this and features that trope. And last up, someone asked for fantasy romance with the perfect amount of spice, romance, and world building. So right away, Sarah J Mass, any single book by her, um, definitely Akatar and Throne of Glass. But then Jennifer L. Armentrout, the From Blood Nash series, and also the Companion series, starting with The Shadow and the Ember. But if you've already read those, I suggest Daughter of No World, and this is by Carissa Broadbent. So as many of you know, I didn't absolutely love this book, but I will say it is very well written. There is a great amount of world building. I felt very immersed by the world and the romance was good. Personally, it seems like friends to lovers, which isn't my thing, but if you do like friends to lovers, I think you will love this book. Um, this is definitely a top tier fantasy romance in terms of everything that you asked for. So I highly recommend. If you don't know what this story is about, we are following Tasana and she is sold into slavery. She does this performative magic and eventually she's trying to save up enough money to earn her freedom. However, when she tries to buy her freedom from her master, things don't go as planned. Luckily, she is able to escape and she goes to this order that's kind of like a magical government and asks them for help to save her people. And they say they won't do it until she's accepted into the order. So she trains under this guy and they eventually have this romance and it goes from there. And like I said, I did enjoy this, not quite as much as everyone else seems to, but I do plan on continuing with this series. So definitely pick it up. All right, guys, that's it for all of my personalized book recommendations. Please let me know if there are any specific tropes you would like me to do a full video for. I know I definitely want to do one bed and touch her and you die, but let me know down in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. So I said this already, I post new videos on Thursday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.